You're listening to the End Pod Debate Edition. Thank you for the introduction, Lexi, and hello and welcome to the Ant Pod debate about experimenting on our ants. Now, before we start, I want to say that this podcast can also be heard as an audio version only. Link will be shown in the description. Today, we're sitting and talking with Jake from Antimatters, Lynn from Nina Tudo, and Jack from Ants Major as our little special guest. And Jack, of course, you're not normally a part of the panel, so let's just talk a little bit with you. So, yeah, Jack. So all of those who don't know who you are, who are you? Uh, my name is Jack. I am 19, so quite a young ant keeper. And I have recently got back into ant keeping after eight years. Oh. And um, there's one thing that's a little bit different from normal ant keepers to Jack. Um, Jack buys every single ant CC compared to normal iron keepers who mm-hmm. think what species to get and then buys them act just jack just goes out and gets all of them how many colonies do you keep jack uh i was counting earlier i think it's 27 currently but i've got a couple coming tomorrow so and yeah. uh, when did you join the hobby back again uh it was i'm pretty sure it was a uh, july I got a lay right. system ready colony and kind of just went from there. Right, that's not too bad, not too bad. Since I've known you, you've got like half of those colonies and I've known you for two weeks or three. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but Jack, I know you're the guy who puts Venus's queens together and uh, makes them all go out and fight, even though other people say you shouldn't do it. Um, and that goes very well into today's podcast about experimenting on ants because... We have Lynn in the uh, panel who have put Mesobarbarus brood into Cephalotus colonies. That's a little bit of experimentation. Um, Antimatters is merging two different formic- Formica Fusca colonies. And Jack, you also probably have done some experimenting. So, and saying that, Jack, what have you been doing? Do you have, have you been experimenting in any ants? Um, well, I did. I'm on to my fourth and fifth half Gnathus colony now as it didn't go great for me but I did manage to merge a queen into a uh, queenless colony and it was a success and they're still going today they've actually got brood well larvae as of yesterday which is good not so bad. So there's also some rumors that that you are trying to. I have I keep saying rumors to everyone at the moment. I don't know why I'm so naughty. Um, you also would. You, I mean, since I started to meet you, you really just wanted mini trap jaws. The I don't know the species. I don't know how to pronounce it. But you really want a lot of those colonies, and then you wanna inbreed them to sell even more colonies or something. Tell about. It. Um. Well, the plan was to try and breed colonies together with when the elates fly. But unfortunately, I did have an order of about three more colonies come in and that fell through. So we've currently sitting on one still that are currently pushing elates out left, right and centre. All right. So what's your idea once you, if you get those three other colonies or three new colonies, how will you then make them mate? Well, my plan was to, I was discussing a bit with you and you bounced some ideas to basically, because they don't need a big setup, There, I've got the colony I've currently got in a Wakushi small Gen 3, just to have a big tub full of soil and leaves and just open the lids on all of them and basically just trying to reenact a the rain come in as from what i've read they fly at the beginning of the rain season they all emerge to breed so all of these ants will then fly up and mate and how will you catch them then i was gonna i was just gonna put a lid on the um top and hope that once they've 
I don't actually think they mate in the sky. But I might not be correct on that. It's all just a trial and error to see if it's even possible. <laughs> it's something to uh, keep an eye out for sure. Um, so I have in the past also been testing a lot of my ants. I've done my Lacey Schneider experiment, which although it ended as people expected in the beginning, I felt like I always want to experiment with my ants to prove something. So I, I've done my Lacey Schneider experiment in 2020, I think, uh, where I added, I had six Lacey Schneider colonies. One, one, I had two colonies with one queen, two colonies with two queens, and two colonies with three queens, basically. And that's against all the rules, because Niger queens don't go together. And uh, Basically, after a lot of time, the experiment ended as people were expecting, uh, with only one survivor queen remaining. But I feel like why the reason I did that experiment was to help spread the word that this is actually a real thing, because before I started my experiment, when you search for two Lacious Niger Queens together, you would just find people who've put 15 Lacious Niger Queens together. And that was never a part two, so that's personally why I've done uh, experimentations on my ants in the past, but Jake, have you done any experimentations on your ants? Uh, well, of course, we have the Fuscas, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, quite a few. We had a Fusca, I merged them, but that failed, and we <laughs> went terribly wrong, well, terribly wrong this time. Might try in future again, to be fair, to see what happens if, like, they've got no workers at all, any of them. But to be fair, the Fusca went bad. Done a few experiments on, like, Lassius Niger and, like, brood boosting, but with workers as well. And I've had some really good results out of that one. Like, if you just yeah. leave a Lassius Niger colony without, without a queen for, a, would say, at least two weeks, there's quite a good chance that you can literally just dump them into another colony if... And that, yeah, that so, turned so out can quite you, well. Can you explain that whole experiment? Because I remember when I saw your video, I was really impressed. So can you explain from start to finish, just in detail, what you did with those colonies? Oh, yeah. yeah, basically, I was doing a little experiment to see if hibernation, I think, because Ant's Hood was like, we're going to do a hibernation experiment with the Latias Niger. So I had 30 colonies, and I had like 15 non-hibernated and 15 hibernated. But by the end of hibernation, a lot of the non-hibernation queens had kind of given up the ghost and died. So oh. I, was, I, le I was left with quite a few little workers, but they had no queen and they had brood and everything. And there was a few tubes, like a couple tubes with some workers and just brood, but no queens. So I left them quite a while. To be fair, the first time I left them about a month. But and eventually they kind of mushed them all together into a nice big colony with a nice fresh queen that I hibernated as well because I think it does make a difference. So she got a massive head start. She's now at about 800 workers, I'd say, after about one year. <laughs> Which, yeah, that re that worked really well, though. Like merging the Lassius with no queens with the Lassius with a queen went absolutely brilliant, to be honest. Also got the Tetramorium, but that that one was an experiment, but I kind of expected the result because they merged, like, absolutely fine and my leaf cutters i've got a few experiments with them just giving them food but i also gave them a water drinker because nobody recommends giving them a water drinker but i thought you know what i'm gonna give them a drinker and they absolutely adored that and apart from that is you kind of got the yeah you're experimenting with new species which i don't know you end up doing quite a bit sometimes especially if you get the really exotic ones because they don't really have a guide so you're just kind of hoping basically and winging it but i do like when i've got a species that i'm winging it i'll experiment with like one way of caring for it and just go with it and see what happens and yeah and then mostly just nests and the odd field experiment as well on like wild colonies like, i know one colony i i believe it's flavus but it might be umbratus but i'm 99 percent sure it's flavus and the colony must be it's a few kilometers square in area, but it's like a super colony. So one time I just went out with a load of uh, tweezers and the likes and test tubes and everything and just started merging them from all over this super colony. And it turned out the whole thing was like one giant super colony, which was like great because as I was merging the, I'd like collect some workers and then I'd walk like 500 meters 
in another direction and then I'd get some more workers and I'd put them together and it just like they'd merge absolutely fine I was quite blown away by that as well because you just don't expect a Lassius colony to be probably millions of workers strong and taking up many football pitches worth of size so no and I feel like that's very it's something we're going to come back to in a second but I feel like it's it's some nature is really amazing and you don't necessarily know how amazing it is until you do these kind of tests to find out that yeah, they yeah. may all be one massive colony um but then we have the whole ethics of oof are you putting ants in danger just to test but that's something we're going to come back to in a second because firstly we need to talk with Lynn hello Lynn um what kind of tests slash experiments have you done on your ant colonies? Oh, I need to think a bit. Uh, and like uh, ages ago in the past, when I got my first Formica Fuscas, uh, uh, I had two separate colonies and someone asked, are you going to put them together because uh, Fusca can have multiple queens? And at that moment, I didn't think it through. Uh, I just tapped the new, both new colonies out inside of a uh, new outworld with a fresh tube. It was uh, one colony with one queen and uh, 19 workers and one colony with one queen and four workers. And they, they, those two, they merged absolutely fine. Nothing, nothing on the head, no, not, uh, nothing went wrong. Uh, so I guess that was the first ever experiment I ever did, sort of. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, exp I experiment around with brood a lot because I have, of course, a lot of colonies. So uh, uh, what did I do? My Messer uh, Cephalotus is the most well known, I guess. I boosted her with uh, Barbarous Brood, and that went absolutely fantastic. Uh, I've also tried to boost uh, Camponotus consobrinus uh, from Australia with Camponotus maculatus, uh, Camponotus lichniperda, and Camponotus nicobrensis. Sadly, that all failed. And the queen seemed really aggressive, and every time she, she kept. Uh, uh, wrecking the pupae of the other species, so that didn't work out. Um, and I'm also trying to uh, captive breed the Camponotus maculatus. This year, sadly, uh, I didn't have drones in time, but next year we're going to try again, and hopefully <laughs> with more luck. For this year, I actually have uh, one queen that had this, uh, made it with her brother, so she laid eggs, and one of those eggs turned into a larvae, but sadly, she ate that larvae uh, two days ago, so now she is back to 4x. I guess we're going to wait to see what happens. Either she will have a drone or she will have an anetic soon. So that's something uh, that's going to be pretty interesting to find out what's going to happen there. That's, that definitely sound, that, that sounds very interesting, not going to lie. Um, and I think what you just said with also brute boosting experiments, that's also something I've done a lot because when you have a colony that is dying uh, or doing bad brood boost can sometimes save the colonies but you don't necessarily have the same species um, I know especially Wakuchi he has done a lot of for my, I think it's very interesting um, a lot of brood boosting tests on his uh, Saturday night talks so he has these talks where he's just uh, hanging out in the ant community um, join it if you want I love them uh, and he's done a lot of adding this pupae to this and this to this. And it's really interesting to see who accepts who because sometimes it can really save a colony. Now I had my Campanotus Singularis colony and I tried brood boosting them with Nico Rinsis brood. And they they just didn't understand it. They they kind of take, took care of it, but they just didn't understand it. Um, and when I tried hatching a worker to give them, they didn't understand it. And when I then tried to put in a live worker, they kill it straight away, and that's because when the, as far as I know, when they open the cocoon, that's where they actually lick it and give it its own scent. So that's why you can brood boost with uh, brood, but once you have workers, you start to have problems with the scent, as far as I'm aware of, which, I, I don't know, it's really cool to me. Um, I think my two biggest experiments is the Lacious Nitro 2020 experiment, but of course I've also done my Campanotus Lignoperda experiment, which is based around that you can't put two queens together because they will kill each other. But if you put them in a specialized Venus setup where the two test tubes are closed so only the workers can escape, the queens can't meet each other and they should just start their own separate colonies, which they did. 
the experiment was, in my eyes, a big success because the colony kickstarted with three queens instead of one queen, and they all did fine until one of the queens died um, for mysterious reasons. But I think that's also something we can talk about now because when you are experimenting with ants, it's important to have the ethics with you because are you just doing this to kill the ants? Or at least as a content creator myself, I get a lot of attention when I'm doing things wrong. Um, like like getting Solonopsis Geminata, so that that's your cost <laughs> had a little bit of as yeah, yeah, a lot of people reacted to that at least. Um but yeah, Jack, you are half and half a content creator. Um and I know of course quite a few of your experiments. Is it something you talk about public or is it just something you do in your little land cave? Oh, i I'm happy to talk about it public, but I've got a couple things I'm thinking about trying, but I'm yet to try. Oh, fire away. What's up? Um, I'm planning on getting five honeypot queens this year's nuptials once they um get into the country, and with the pl- plague 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 sops the re- the cherry headed um <laughs> red the cherry um headed giant honeypot ants. Apparently, they're somewhat related to Lasis Niger. And my plan is to see if I can brew boost Queen with Lasis Niger cocoons and see if that will work. That sounds very special. (laughs) It could be risky, but I'm all about science. And trying new things to see if it works. I mean, I'm also five queens, I guess. I'm also planning on taking some naked pupae from my Fidole nodus and putting it in with my Fidole Solcaticeps queen and worker. That's the right. other one. So are you. So if you're sharing these experiments normally, do you ever get any feedback? It's just positive feedback, or have you received any, like, why would you do these things? I haven't spoken about them yet, because I was only speaking to someone the other night about them. But I've got a two-queen Manica Rubida colony with one worker currently. I was speaking with Lynn about it, and it more than likely will fail. But the only real way to see is to test it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the things that is with experimentation. Personally, I, I like seeing people experiment as long as there's a little bit of a reason behind it. Um, I know sometimes it's hard to see your reason, Jack. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yet again, it's also... If you're ex- just experiment to experiment, you may see something very interesting. Like, will this Glacius Niger Queen actually no? Will this Honeypot Queen actually accept Niger brood? Because that may be a better way for from us European ankeepers to actually kickstart a colony of honeypots a lot easier. We just don't really know until things are tested. So, I personally really like that people go out to do tests. Um, but as a guy who makes videos, I've also received a lot of hate for actually going out because. It can hurt the colonies, and sometimes you well, like when my Niger, my Lacius Niger experiment started to fail. Um, so to explain the experiment, the first few many months, this both the three queen colonies, as far as I remember, the one three queen colony, I think one of the queens were infertile, so they ate and ruined all of the eggs for all of the three queens, so they just never started. Um, the other colony got their first worker, and then trouble started, and they never really kicked off. No, hang on. I think actually the second colony did well. This the uh, the second three queen colony did well, but one of the two queen colonies and one of the three queen colonies did well, and those queens actually survived for way longer than people expected because in the wild it's documented that they can found together um, to improve success rates, and that's kind of what I wanted to document. And it ended up taking about a year and a half before the workers starved the queens and killed them. Um, at least that's what it looked like from looking at the gases and stuff like that. And, of course, people were hating and saying, oh, we expected this to happen, but I still thought it was very interesting to 
follow the progress and see how it actually turned out because it wasn't as I expected. I thought that they would just kill each other straight away. Um, I I hoped they wouldn't, but that was what I personally expected when I hear that they wouldn't survive together. Um, Anti or Jake, have you received any hate or negative attention regarding experimenting on ants? I don't think so yet, although I'm always kind of kind of quite careful on what I dis- disclose. Like if I've done an experiment and like the Tetramorium, like merging, I, I won't really tell people about the experiment, but I will tell people like I do think they merge pretty well, if you get what I mean. <laughs> but um, I haven't really received any hate yet, but it's probably because I haven't told people all the experiments. I always try to keep them morally OK, though, but. It is a bit hard sometimes, though, because it's like, what are the morals with ants? And like, where do you draw the line on like cruelty with your ants? But I do try to avoid needlessly killing them. Though. That's like that's definitely something I do avoid. I mean, I think it's it's quite interesting because I received a lot of backlash when I tried to um, add add two Harpagnathus venusus colonies to each other. I had a colony that arrived with a dead queen, sadly, and I got a colony from another store um, with a, a lovely little healthy colony. And looking back, I should just have kept them separate. Uh, but I decided to merge them because everyone I told, I, I think I asked like 10, 15 people, and I talked with people in the comments, and I think two people were against it. And the other like 14, 15 people I heard from that said that they can just, they can just go well together without any problems. Then I put them together, it everything went bad and people were so upset online because I started an ant war and of course I, I want to do it a little bit clickbaity but when I'm doing my experiments I'm doing them for the sake of the colony and not really for the video sake um, but as a I mean as a creator I always also keep the video closely um, to monitor everything because unlike you Jake I try to keep everything just as public as possible that's always kind of my thing but I do understand your way I mean your ways is way smarter yeah one of the thing i think we should bring it up now because it is quite uh, a well-known misunderstanding i think but i also tried to merge some harps and yeah it didn't go well at all either because I, I don't think they genuinely merge very well basically though they kicked one of the queens out with one of her workers and she was forced to live in the outworld in a drinker for a bit and i don't think they ever accepted her in the end but yeah, it didn't go very well at all, merging the, the harps. <laughs> so that's quite interesting, because Jack, you've also merged, or tried to merge. How did your merging go? Uh, well, I've merged... I've Hang on, merged Jack, wait, wait. Twice. Can you just explain your whole harps his- history? Because I think you've had three colonies in total. Can you explain five. the whole theory? <laughs> five? <laughs> I've had five half Ignathus Veneta colonies over the last... I think three months and it started off with a two queen about 30 worker colony I brought and then when it come to moving nests they got really stressed out wouldn't move into the new nest all stayed in the outworld and the next morning I woke up to 25 dead including one of the queens. So I was down to one queen and about seven workers. Did you, then... pressure, did you pressure them to moving, or how, how was the situation? Um, yes, I did pressure them. They, they wasn't really doing anything for the first two months that I had them. They ate their broods. And then they plastered the whole of the top of the um, chambers so I couldn't see into anything. And I ended up getting a little bit impatient. I'm not going to lie about that. So I took the acrylic off the top and there was no eggs at all. They kind of just barricaded themselves in. And I thought maybe changing the nest might work, but... They are quite a sensitive species, and it went downhill. And then I moved them into a new net, a smaller nest now, because I couldn't warrant putting them in this new nest because it would would have been way too big for them. And then 
the queen died. The sec, the other queen, she died, and two of the workers. And then I thought to myself, I might as well just buy another colony at this point because why not? We're going to try again. And yeah. when they arrived, there was fourteen dead. And all that was left was a queen and two workers. And this is the first time I decided to um, merge together. And that didn't go too well. The um, One of the workers was rejected and was um, killed before I could get there in time. Oh. But then the queen and the other worker were accepted. But then the queen died a month later. She did. Uh, yeah, the Whereas, are very strange. Yeah, they are very strange. I was keeping them dry, uh, a lot drier before, but I found that they kind of like it really saturated with the um, two colonies I've got now, and they seem to be doing very well. Yeah. So, They've so what got... happens? So now you had one colony with a dead queen. Or did you have two colonies with no queens, both of the colonies then? Um, well... To continue, at this sorry. Point, because the, um, the colony that I had ordered um, come pretty much all dead, they sent me out a new colony. Um, oh. And I had a colony... Uh, so I had that colony sent out, and I thought to myself, I might as well have a little go at merging... This um one queen, two two workers, and it it went all right. It did, and then it failed a month later. And then the new colony come. So I I then attempted to merge the um the new colony with the old colony without without queen and. The queen of the new colony was the one that s wouldn't accept any of the new workers. And then it... So I left them to. And then I ordered a third colony. A, thir a third? I think it was a third or a fourth. I'm not too sure. And they did merge with the old colony. That didn't so have a queen. Why did you? I want to say the reason I'm laughing a little bit is because all the way through, I talked with Jack and I kept saying I don't think you should do it, and he's like, "I'm gonna do it." Uh, so that's why. That's why I think it's uh, funny looking back. So now you're ordering your fourth colony. Why did you think that merging now would be better than the other times? I don't actually have a reason for it. It was a gut feeling that maybe it would work this time round. And did it then? Yes, it did. Oh. Oh, well, well, that would make it my fifth colony, actually, then. Because I've gone through five and had two successful... I'd say successful. They're currently going well. And I think that, that proves why sometimes experimenting is good and sometimes it's bad. Because clearly... Out of our, I don't know how many colonies we've had to combine then, but like eight colonies or something, only two of the, I don't know, five merchings have been successful. Um, but that also just shows that you can merge them. And I think it should be very hit and miss. Yeah, it's, exactly. You can merge them, and you cannot at all merge them. Uh, I think what went wrong with my colony, uh, something you also noticed, that you had two very different size of workers from the two different colonies. And I can't remember who had talked with the thing. It may have been Wakushi who said that it may be because they have been captured in different regions of uh, their country or neighboring countries. And that's why they're so genetically different. Although they are the same species, they're different species almost. Uh, because they're, my, my colonies were also, one, one of the workers were very big in the new colony compared to the old colony. And I remember with you, Jack, you had the same issue. Or not the yeah. same issue, but the same. But that's that's some of the things there is with experimenting on ants that you just sometimes you sometimes you win it like ants like Jake discovering that half the world is owned by the same Lazarus flowers colony um, just goes up and down. 
Hi, it's Succeed from Pour More Art. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Ant Pod, and please visit my ant and spider shop at www.pouremoreart.ca. We're a Canadian business shipping ant and spider keeping supplies worldwide, specializing in test tube accessories and a variety of hybrid formicaria, glass outrolls, and enclosures. Enjoy the show. So Jake, do you have a... You said that you don't... I think what... Oh yeah, now I remember. Sorry, I'm rambling. Um, I think what you did, what you're doing with not necessarily sharing all of your experimentations are good, because if you are sharing all of your experiments, uh, you may get a lot of backlash, like I'm often receiving. Um, so oh, maybe it, Canada, right. <laughs> and it's merging the... seven colonies or whatever it was. Yeah, <laughs> I doubt that got a lot of hate. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. Back when yeah. Yeah, when he was like, I'm going to merge together all of these things and yeah and it was like oh what are you doing like don't show everybody this the the, the funny thing was back when he did that so it's Ants Canada he got seven carbon train colonies and put them all in one arena so they couldn't meet and a war started of course uh, oh. the funny thing was just as he did his experiment I did my experiment with carbon trains and mine was successful only difference uh, I, I merged my colonies straight from the get-go, so as soon as one worker hatched, it could meet all the other queens, where he waited till all the seven colonies had different scents and smells. And I think that's what he did wrong. But that also just shows that mine was quite successful. Now, Anne's check also did an experiment. I haven't followed up too much, but I remember that he got workers, and as far as I remembered, they also interacted with each other. He had like a little 3D printed nest where the queens, if I'm not wrong, could actually touch each other's antennae or something. Uh, either way, I find it very interesting to following, um, following experiments. The one thing I don't quite necessarily understand is just doing experiment for the sake of doing experimenting. Uh, I got five Hellacious Flowers Queen to- together because I found five queens and I realized I didn't want to have Hellacious Flowers Colony, so why not just put it all together? And that was actually a very successful call. Quite successful colony, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. Uh, even though I just in the beginning captured them because I didn't know what to do with them, and they were queens. Um, but we also have, I think, Anne's check also put fifty Lacius flowers, flowers queens together, and that was very bad. It ended in it ended in just a lot of problems. It may not, I think it was Anne's check, uh, but that was mainly due to if you have in, infertile queens, they may ruin it all for the other queens. So. Yeah, it's interesting to experiment for sure. Um, did you have anything to add, Jake? Um, oh, sorry. Oh, no, oh, I, think, um, I think that's it <laughs> for the minute. Right. Yeah. Well, did you have anything to add, Jack? We've got very similar similar names. We have. Um, <laughs> as far as the latest flavors go, when I first got into ant keeping, on my first nuptials, I'd call. I think it was 22 Lacey Slavis Queens, and I kept them all together. And it did turn out to be a very successful colony after they killed 10 of the queens. Damn. And I was down to 12. And then later on, another four died. And by the time I released them back into the same area, I caught them. I was at eight queens. And a couple hundred workers. All right, I think it's good when you are doing experiments to actually show your your research online, um, because it can help prevent other people from doing it. Uh, like with just, I know I now know three people just from talking with you that have done delicious flowers with multiple queens, um, and Vienna have done it, and he, as far as I know, it is going well. He put thirteen queens together, I think. Uh, which I personally thought would fail because I thought there would be too many queens. Uh, but it seems to be doing all right. And Jack, you had a little bit of experience right there where it was a little bit like my experiment. My five queens slowly died one by one. I think my personal belief was I didn't feed them enough and they decided to go for queens because they were very skittish and scared of going into the art world, which was my own mistake. Um, and then we had Anne's check who put 50 queens or something together, which just didn't at all work. Um, but Lynn, you're kind of the Anne guru. Juru, you and you kind of follow a little bit everything in the hobby, as far as uh, I know. Do you see what? What's your thoughts of experimenting on ants? Because you must see a lot of children around the place do funny experiments. 
Well, for me, it's like if it's a very well known fact, like last year's Niger, multiple queens will fail. <laughs> then I, uh, why, why would you? Yeah, of course, for the sake of YouTube, showing everybody uh, that it can't be done, uh, it's okay for once. But and th sometimes there's kids and they watch the video, they know what's going to happen, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna try it anyway." <laughs> and and then I'm like, "But but why?" <laughs> you know? And they're like, yeah, "It's just last year's night here because those you find them anywhere anyway." But uh, in my eyes. My eyes, it's just wrong that way because they're animals. They're not. They're not toys. They're 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 living creatures. You should you should treat them as live living creatures. Uh, but with some experience, like uh, Manika Ribida, I actually know about the two queens because I've tried two queens uh, because of the challenge, and that was actually my little experiment that I totally one hundred percent forgot about, which I also never mentioned anywhere online except in the Anton anonymous uh, Manika Rubida chat. Apparently, <laughs> I just found that out. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually kind of curious what will happen to Jack's Manika Rubida if they will also fight. Uh, the workers will also banish one of the queens or if it will actually work for a longer time or whatever. Uh, so that's a bit my view. Like if it's well known that something's going to happen and you try it anyway, it's just a little bit stupid. But if it's not well known, like merging certain species or trying to brute, bo brute boost with other species because sometimes it has been successful and sometimes it fails. Yeah, why not? I think uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, so initially, when I did my experiment, when you search two queens together, you got a lot of different things. Now, when you search two Lacious Niger queens, you find a lovely little clickbaity picture of me saying, don't do this. Um, <laughs> and then it says La two Lacious Niger queens together or something, which is perfect because people shouldn't do it. Uh, but I can totally relate to what you're saying, Lynn, because after I did my experiment, I saw people online was like, Oh, I want to see if my results are the same as you and Hall of Fame. Like, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the the big problem was it went so well for so long that I just had a brute boost at Lacious Niger Colony. I had three queens and they were doing better than a one queen colony. So I see why people would try to recreate it because it, it looks successful. And even though the queens died in the end, it was still a very nice brute boosted colony almost, but it was a naturally boosted colony. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting for sure. Be yeah, it also makes me wonder with, with the Lignipurda experiment. Now that the Saturn is a thing, if you get a large Saturn specialized so none of the queens can escape, could you then keep nine queens in one colony? Have a nine queen carbon triangle colony? That would be cool for sure to try out. Um, yeah, um, I think it. Overall, it's just a little bit of having the ethics and why you're doing the experiment. So I tend to kind of have meaning behind it. But like I think Jake and Lynn said in the beginning, when you get a new colony, you have to kind of experiment your way forward to see what they like. Like with my bull ant, I'm doing so many experiments with feeding mm. to see what the bull ant likes. Because every time I come over there, she goes out in the outworld, just kind of looks at me. Uh, she's actually very cute because I've, I've hand fed her. Uh, sugar almost. I put cotton in there and I dropped sugar while she was just staring at me. And then I took the sugar out and she went over there and started drinking. So that was almost direct contact. Um, but Great no matter what I... Oh, I mean, that was a very, very lovely moment. I should do a video on that. Um, <laughs> but it's My a lot one. of... Exp huh? My one scares me a little bit currently. She eyeballs me from three meters away waving her antennas everywhere. Every time she goes out into the outworld. I mean, my mine also scares me. Um, but she, she kind of knows to just wait at the door. She's just sitting at the door looking at me, uh, working when I'm emptying the trash or something, which I find very cute and cool. Um, but I'm experimenting a lot with what food to give them because she doesn't accept anything, and yet she comes out in the outworld expecting something. So I'm trying a few different things without any luck at the moment. Um, she may just not be hungry, um, which is an understandable reason. Um, but we always do different experiments. Now, Lynn, can you go a little bit into the whole Mesocephalotus, Mesobarbarus experiment? To share well, your words. When I got Mesocephalotus, uh, she had 
uh, some root. I don't remember if she had a pupae or not. I think she had, but that worker, that pupae, uh, died pretty quickly. And I was scared that I would kill my queen by accident. Because they are really expensive and they're beautiful and just want to succeed. Because I know a lot of other people had queens. And their queens died. Uh, randomly or just after some time. But there are not many cephalodus colonies in the Netherlands. There are not many cephalodus colonies altogether, I think. I know of one giant one from a German guy. Uh, so I wanted my queen to succeed. I want, I want a good colony. I'm not even sure how I'm going to manage it because I don't have the space. <laughs> but <laughs> I want a good colony. Uh, so I was scared that she would die by accident. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to boost her with Barbarus Brood because why not? If she eats it, it's okay. Then she has a meal. And if she, don't, if she doesn't eat them, then I might have Barbarus Workers with her. So I ended up boosting her. I don't remember what setup I had at that moment. I think it was just a plain test tube or maybe the, uh, the it Venus. Was Venus. Yeah, Venus with yeah. the weird uh, test tubes. Yeah, it was mm. a, 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 a <laughs> It was Venus at that moment, and uh, she might have eaten one or two pupae, but the others, because she was full, she just left them. Uh, and those, of course, they closed, and they started to act like regular uh, barbarous workers. They cared for their other brood. They were actually collecting the seeds and making ant bread, and she was happy because she had ant bread. And then another person's uh, cephalotus died. And they had workers, they had roots, and he was like, yo, you want to have this? I was like, yes. <laughs> so I got uh, Cephalotus boost. I was tempted to add the workers as well, but those workers were actually fully matured uh, Cephalotus workers. So I was a little bit scared that they might kill uh, the barbarous workers or the queen or injure any of them. So I... Uh, uh, I just took the brood, so they have this massive pile of pupae and larvae from uh, the other cephalodes. And then the first uh, cephalodes worker closed and it went all as normal and she was actually two times as big as the miners and maybe uh, like one head bigger than the uh, than the medias from the mesoberbare, so that was awesome. And everything went well, they were doing their own thing, they were actually caring for the brood uh, better than the barbarus was because the barbarus is a little bit skittish when it comes to uh, heating but cephalodes is of course they they know the region that they're from they know the heat uh, that their brood can handle so they started to pile up the brood at uh, heating and the barbarus didn't really care they were more working on the on the food and on the seeds because they were now older workers than the, the younger workers and everything still went well Pretty much uh, one or two uh, barbarous workers eventually died. I'm not sure what the cause was, but they passed away. And I'm pretty sure I still have barbarous workers with her. And now I also have multiple cephalodus workers with her. And they are doing really well in the Saturn. I moved them into a Saturn. Actually testing, experimenting if the cephalodus queen can move through the Saturn. But so far she has not moved the tubes yet. She's still in her own tube. And I'm still debating, I say this every week, if I want to add some more Mesobarbarus brood to see if this will also be accepted or not, but I have not done so yet. You just gave me a really cool idea, Lynn. Um, so going on the basis that I think it's, of course, very clever that you didn't add the Cephalotus workers. I think they would have started fighting because they would be two separate colonies. Um, but the reason my merge, my brood boosting with my Singularis failed is because I brood boosted them with cocoons. Now it just makes me wonder if you put any random ant colonies together and just give a, a young colony that can't eat all of the... I mean, of course, you, you sacrifice the life of random workers. But if you can harvest like Fusca workers, they have the naked pupae, put them into a Niger colony. They may eat a few of them, but it's if it's like a one queen, three worker colony, they can't eat more than one or two. But the Fusca workers in their naked pupae would still hatch. I would be really interested in seeing what actually happens, because of course Mesocephalotus and Mesobarbarus is a little bit similar because they're both mesogene. 
But what if I just take another Messer negative pupae and put it inside another small colony? It's, uh, it sounds really interesting because the reason my cocooning experiment failed or brood boosting was because the Singularis didn't want to open the cocoon. Um, and that's why it got old and died. And when I tried opening it, um, the worker started wiggling around, but it needed an ant to actually go in and lick it and uncover it from the stickiness. And the workers never wanted to do that. Um, and if I had the life worker, like I said earlier, they killed it. Um, which was something I tried once, and I didn't like it. Um, but it makes me wonder rather you can brute boost negative pupates. Jake, do you have anything to add? Well, I was just going to say on that, uh, I'm not 100% sure you really can, because uh, I think they kind of all speak their own little language. And it'd be like, say like one of us go into china and just being <laughs> dumped there if you get what i mean with like absolutely nothing and not actually speaking chinese like but there's, i guess you... there's a possibility that you they could like thrive but i think the issue comes when it's like oh i've been told this by this ant but then the other ant will be like oh my god that's like a bad thing or something if you get what i mean like we should all get hyped up and but i don't know it all it all gets a bit miscommunicated between them i think after a little bit <laughs> yeah i would love to know how ants actually how they would communicate because if you took a baby and put it in china you would just have a european baby who would learn chinese from the get-go as they grow up because of course if you put it if you put a young child five years old you'll have a lot more problems but if you put a baby over there they will just learn to live um and that's that's what makes me really curious because what happens if you put two if you, I mean, you can try it with the. I can try putting a Meta Barbarus. I mean, I, the problem is I don't have a nest that's easy to harvest. I don't really have colonies in Venus or um, Saturns that are harvest friendly. Um, but it would be cool because I would love to see if the if I mean the ant will wake up. No matter what, will the other colonies just kill it? Or I mean, they may just kill it. I don't know. But it would be interesting to. Um, to try because if you have a small colony of Lacius Niger, they wouldn't go out and try to kill. They would rather protect. And if you just have a baby that suddenly wakes up, the confused. It, I, I would love to see someone do this at least. Um, if there's someone out there with a Fusca colony or something, a colony with naked brood, naked pupae, and a young colony of something different, uh, please tag me if you're trying this experiment. Uh, but only do a few babies at the time if you have if you are able to go out with despair. This, this is the thing with experimenting because if it just turns bad, you have just killed colony members and like Lynn said um, I feel incredibly a lot the same way that these are still animals and even though you're killing a baby, I can't see anything but you're killing a baby that the ants have worked hard to get into this final stage. The worker have worked hard uh, to growing and the colony have worked hard in to nourish this. So I personally I'm not a fan of experimenting that much on my own ants unless I can see that the death risk is very small. Um, what do you, uh, Jack? Let's just ask you, Jack. What do you think of this experiment? You think it would I work? Was, I was just scheming, scheming in my head, thinking about, um, thinking about if um, you could brood boost a Manica rubida with Mimica rubida. Is it Rubida? Rubra. Rubra. Yes, Rubra. yes, you can. That is that is good to know. <laughs> that and could, then the um... question is: Then the question is, would you also be able to do it with a uh, naked Fusca brood? Or is it because it's Myrmica brood? Dun, dun, dun. I'm I'm not too sure. I've never kept any Formica species, but it it could it possibly could be done if they oh, um oh. if it's if we're saying that once the ant emerges out of the pupa stage, then it obviously gets its scent from the workers in the colony. I mean, even I just think... you, even just Mr. Barbara's workers, they also have naked. All the only demand is you have to get a naked pupa so the ants doesn't have to work with a cocoon. Yeah. Um, yeah, like like a little bit hyped. It could possibly. Um, I'm guessing it will probably work with other. I'm guessing it would work quite well with um, African Mesa species um, brood boosting with Mesa cephalotus. 
as I've got a Mesa Angularis queen, and I was just thinking about that. You could, um, because they're a lot similar in climate. I don't think they're from the same country, but they're same the same continent anyway. All right, Lynn, share your thoughts. Well, we are talking about naked pupae, and we're talking about the same country. Well, we know where Singularis and Mutilarius uh, Campanotus species come from. Do you know about the naked pupae from Campanotus maculatus subnudus? <laughs> oh, and how these naked? might be possible to boost with Singularis or Nicobarensis or Mutilarius or whatever other species arrogance <laughs> to make it crazy. They're small also, <laughs> so they won't be targeted as easy. And uh, uh, Subnudus breeds like crazy. They have so much brood. So it's so easy for them to just miss a couple of pupae. <laughs> ah, that's cool because I, I didn't know any Campanotus species that had naked. Is it all Maculatus subnudus or is it only some of them? It's all of subnudus. That's why they're called subnudus, which uh, translates to naked. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It, it, that may be a colony. I mean, can you think in five years' time, every time you have a colony that struggles to get... Every time you have a carbon trend that struggles to just get a little bit of a subnodal negative brood to add in there, the worker wakes up, confused that the colony can't kill it and they take it in. It would be cool. And again, that's, that's I think, we are about to end up the podcast, but I think that is actually a cool thing to end off with. Because it may just fail, and we will forget about this forever. But if someone does it and it's successful, and someone else does it and it's success, success, successful, it may be something that could have saved my Singularis Queen. Um, and for people out there who may be tight on budget, it can't be saving uh, a real saver if you can actually brute boost a colony because I think my Singularis colony died because it had two majors and a queen and the majors didn't know how to take care of the brood. And I was recommended to remove the majors, but I don't like removing ants and killing them. Um, or not killing them, but putting them in a, a way forever. Um, but if I just had some subnotus, maculatus subnotus brood and added it in, the worker may have just woken up, gone in, taken care of the brood, and they may have been alive. They may not have been, but yeah, that's the thing with experimentation. You never know. All right, Jake, final thoughts on this week's topic? Well, I think we've hit most of the things, but I do think everyone should experiment a little bit with their ants. For sure, though, <laughs> like just make sure that you keep it all kind of for the best of the colony sort of thing. But if, especially if you've got a colony that looks like it's on its last legs, like that colony you're just talking about, then it's kind of as well. You've got the option of like they're, they're going to die anyway. So yeah. maybe an experiment. It's you haven't got as much to lose, if you get what I mean. It's sort of it's more worth a try. Kind of like if you had a really bad illness, like and there's no treatments that are formally out there but i don't know you can sometimes get a little bit of like research treatment and you've got to test it i guess at some point to see if it works like i mean i think that's some have the guinea pigs and if they're gonna do, it sounds really bad but if they're gonna die anyway so uh, i guess it's you kind of creating more value from a bad situation if you maybe do a little bit of experimenting like <laughs> it sounds really bad though no, I mean, it doesn't at all, because that is what you do in, re in real life as well with cancer patients. If you have a new experimental method, you can sign up to try it and if you meet the right circumstances and demands and all of these weird things. Um, and then yeah. you can put your own life in risk, but it may help or it may not worsen your situation because you're in a bad situation already. Um, yeah, that is some, a valid, some very valid points. Lynn, final thoughts on today's topic. If you want to experiment really badly with uh, native species, try and experiment with heating them a little bit. And you will see how much difference it makes when you heat native colonies. <laughs> All right. Lovely small words there. Um, yeah, always cool to go out and heat the colonies and see what they like. Uh, all, even just adding a heat cable is experimentational. Experimental. 
uh, because you need to find out what the colonies prefer. Do they like the hot side, the cold side? That's an experiment right there. Um, Jack, final thoughts. Special guest, Jack. Final thoughts on today's topic. <laughs> I said I wouldn't get any more colonies, but after speaking about this tonight, I think there's going to be a lot of experiments in 2023 regarding some of the topics we spoke about to see if it does work regarding brood boosting different species. Yeah, I really, uh, if all of you out there, if you are thinking of doing this, please tag me or send me some messages. I would love to see people actually doing this. Um, I think my final thoughts are I'm really kind of hyped on this whole, again, it may just fail straight away and then it's the dream is dead, but I'm really hyped to see rather adding naked brood to different colonies actually can help. Um, because we, I, I thought there wasn't anything that could save my Singularis colony. They ate. I, I got brood boosted, boosted with Singularis brood. So and Antics sent out some Singularis brood, and they actually took care of it. And then they ate it a few days later. Even though I fed them same day, and they went out to feed on the same. And there was just the mages that didn't know what to do. Um, but if that had been some weird ants that had just woken up, could they have done things differently? We will never know. Um, all right, so that has been it for this podcast. Now we'll go into our little final segment, which doesn't have a name and probably will never have. Um, Lind, what is your weekly ant room update? Uh, let's see if something happens. The mood, mood, I cannot speak this name, Xiangbang, Multilarius, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they accidentally uh, opened one of their pupae yesterday. It was way too early and the uh, pupae died. It was still white and naked and everything. So that's the sad news. But they got mm-hmm. eggs. So that's happy news. It was a, bit, a little bit all over the place. Uh, don't remember if this was last week or this week, but one of the, my yellow crazy ant queens died. So that's also sad news. So that's some of the ants, Lynn. How about the cephalotus? How are they doing? They seem to be doing really well. They are actually moving their brood up and down uh, the two tubes that they have available because the heating is different there. And there's a lot of larvae and pupae and eggs, so I really expect them to be blooming uh, really soon. And then we have the, the Pogo Murmex uh, beside those. I've, and finally, for the first time now, I see a worker actually out in the uh, outworld foraging. But their tube has turned pink. So that means that there's bacteria growing there, but it's probably nothing to worry about. It's really being overhyped by uh, in Canada that it's dirty and dangerous, but I don't think it's, it, is, it is at all. And uh, yeah, the other colonies seem to be mm-hmm. doing well. Lin, Lin. Yes. Famous last words. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, uh, Jake, how is your and room news? Well, um, the Campanotus arrogance, which uh, been keeping everyone up to date with, it's still alive, amazing. <laughs> I think it, it's maybe been two or three weeks now, but I'm still quite surprised that they're still alive because normally Campanotus go downhill fast for me, but I have kind of modified the incubator pretty much just for them. The other day, they said, now I have an incubator inside of an incubator, which is quite nice. But uh, yeah, super steady temperature now. So fingers crossed they should not die. I'm not going to say they should grow because that's pushing it. But yeah, (laughs) fingers crossed nothing bad happens to them. So are you on the lookout for any more ants? Or is it just stable at the moment? Uh, Only the polyrackers. By, or Bimar, I don't know how you say it, Bimata or Bimata, like, because, yeah, I just love them. But to be fair, except for that and Polyrachus Ypsilon, I'm pretty good on the ant front. So it's, I'm going to try not to buy any more for a little bit. We'll see if with rather that sticks up or not. All right, Jack, what about you? Um, do you have any exciting ant room news? Um, well, the... Hopnapus Venetar have now got their first larvae as of yesterday. And that's pretty cool because I've gone without larvae for the last two months. And the um, Mimeteris Bing Army have got four elates now. Yeah. One male, three females. So... We'll see what happens there. 
and All the right. I've got the leaf cutter pod set up, so we'll be getting leaf cutters very soon. Before Ancon? Um I'm trying to wait to Ancon, <laughs> but you you know what I'm like. Yeah, I Very... mean, you said you you said you were gonna get bull ants next year, then summer, then next month, and this was and all pretty two... much. This was two or three weeks ago, and you have them now. <laughs> yeah, she come yesterday, six days in transit. How was? But she? she seemed to be she. She was very alert after about twenty minutes. She was um, in the test tube moving around. So I thought that might be the best time to get her out of that test tube and into a dark nest. And she seems to be happy in there. She, as far as I'm aware, she has eaten her eggs during shipping. Yeah, which is understandable if it's a long one. Yeah, especially yeah. with the snow last week. Yeah, it was uh, unlucky timing. Um, that had me worried the most. Yeah, I mean, so they are surprisingly... I mean, I th- so when I talk with Ant and Co, who sold your colony and also my colony, um, they were like, no, no, we don't we don't necessarily heat them because they, if you cook them, they will die and they will do all right in cold weather. Um, and I was like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I got them and, yeah, my colony was fine. They're both the larvae had survived and they're doing very well now. Um, an update to them is we still have one cocoon. I'm expecting it to open any day now. The queen still have eggs, but she's more active than she has been for a very long time. Uh, since the uh, larvae spun its cocoon, she's been very inactive, but now she's going crazy and she's very active again, which is annoying because I don't know why she's out hunting. Because I, I feed her a roach, she kills it, she puts it in the trash can and goes home, um, which... I don't understand. <laughs> um, but else, my Solenopsis Geminata, which I've received, um, are doing quite well. They are already now, I've had them for about a week, and already now, they are dang- scary, scarily aggressive. <laughs> so, I mean, they just, I have the Wakushi pot connected, and there's always workers out there just looking. Um, so, <laughs> I almost need to attach a very small artwork soon, even though there's only t- 20 workers in the colony. Um, but they're just so small, they just run when I open, so, yeah. They are Except so cute. They're so cute. Uh, debatable. Um, <laughs> they uh, are. Yeah. I had one running up my arm the other day, and it just wouldn't go back into the well. pod. Flammable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my view on it, but <laughs> burn them all. <laughs> Uh, people oh. people were not happy that I got them on social media, that's for sure. People were very annoyed. Um, but yeah, else the Venators have eggs, no larvae yet, and the trap jaws don't have any eggs yet. Um, but that's been... I don't know, Casey, can we get an audio check from you, Casey? Are you here? I'll take that as a no. Um, so once more, Casey, I've had a little bit of difficulties, um, which is just how it is sometimes. But guys... We have reached the end of this podcast, 37. Now, 38, sorry. 38? Yeah, 38, I think. And um, it's a little bit of a sad one, because the Ant-Pod will officially take a break. How long it will be, no one knows. But sadly, um, I don't I don't know what's happened, but I've just too much going on in my life at the moment, I feel. Uh, it's not like I use more time on my hands than usual. I guess I do, but... Yeah, I, I don't. I sadly don't have time to keep up with the. Uh, it's it's. I mean, it's minimal editing and it's minimal doing thumbnails and all of this. But it's still, it was enough to tip the boat. So the ant pod will be taking a break, maybe forever, maybe for a few months, maybe for a few weeks. No one will know. I know for sure that I'll do a podcast at AntCon, uh, maybe one before and maybe one after, uh, to hear Lynn and Jake's and my live reactions after the day. Uh, and also Jack, of course, if Jack wants to join. Um, so we will have a podcast right there. But uh, yeah, guys, I want to say thank you very much to Casey for joining us ever, ever since episode nine. Uh, in episode nine, at the end, Pat returned and I requested new co-hosts. Or I asked if anyone wants to join and uh, Casey jumped in 
like a lovely little man and i said no 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 we can't get you i mean i didn't want to get casey but he stuck with it um he didn't care that the time zones were there i was a little bit worried and i was very happy that you were so consistent casey because it's been lovely having you here on the podcast for all of these episodes it's been lovely hearing so much about american and keeping um because before that I've only really seen videos, but to actually sit down and talk with an American ankeeper have been really interesting, just because your whole ankeeping ways is so different. So, yeah. And, of course, around episode 20, uh, 23, 24, we had a little bit of a change-up. Uh, we lost Sam. Sam just kind of disappeared. Uh, and Ryan Ryan was a little bit too busy um, to be to be here in the podcast. But Sam, he had a little bit of a personal stuff and then he came back but he never really came back so but yeah it was really good having jack uh no sam and uh ryan on the podcast as well and then of course we had jake and lynn join so yeah jake and lynn i also just want to say thank you both for uh being here for all of these episodes um it's been lovely with uh, your minds and your mindsets and different ways of uh going in answering questions uh it's i really feel the end part i've been a little bit more special with multiple people on because we've had these multiple thoughts so yeah jake do you have any final words on uh on this ant pot uh taking a break slash dying forever well i think it's it's definitely been like a pleasure to be on the show and so big thanks oliver uh big thanks to everyone else out there as well for for not complaining and <laughs> uh but it has been really nice just yeah sitting down on a like wednesday and just chatting about ants to be honest and i thoroughly enjoyed it so yeah thanks oliver and i i hope that uh well we've got the um the ankhon one but even if it's every like few months i i'd hope it doesn't fully die <laughs> and you know where i am like if you ever want to do like a little episode oh, so wow. i guess if we ever find any extra special topics like maybe yeah, we can I mean, make a I'm few half- more <laughs> I'm halfway thinking of inviting Wakushian to do a, a special one once Gen 4 releases. Um, and maybe just every time a store releases like a new like a new headline overtaking Gen generation of their products. Of course, I don't know what Gen 4 will be like because he's, he's very secretive, which is, un- I understand that. Um, but if it's all revolutionary, we may do a special podcast with Wakushi once Gen 4 comes out as well. We will see. Um, Lynn, do you have any words to say to the Ancon, uh, to, to the Ant for taking a break. Well, I'm hoping uh, next month I'll just get a message on uh, Instagram saying uh, let's do a podcast <laughs> this week. <laughs> That's what I hope. And it will be maybe a monthly thing or something or every two months or every two months, three months. I don't even care. Uh, I just want them to continue. I really enjoyed doing the podcast. I really enjoyed listening to them when I wasn't even a podcast member. Uh, even though my brain goes all over the place while doing a podcast and I don't remember the questions often as they, were, <laughs> as they are asked but uh, yeah it, it's really nice to, to sit here with you guys every week and just talk about ants because yeah, I don't normally talk much about ants except online but it's really something uh, something different and uh, yeah I just hope uh, that, that, that next month will be, uh, <laughs> we'll be back or something <laughs> I can only hope. Uh, I, mean, I think it's really funny having you on the show, Lynn, because I've, I've talked with you for so many years um, and I've never really heard your voice a lot and you've all, I've just seen your name. Um, but it's been fun actually talking with you and uh, getting some proper live uh, live voice chats, uh, hearing about how you just forget your manic repeaters in the background and all of this. Uh, so it's been funny hearing uh, a little bit of the other side than just uh, text you. Um, yeah, but yeah, guys, I want to say thank you all for being here on the podcast and thank the listeners for listening in live. Of course, Jack, you are our special guest. And Jack, where can we find you uh, if people want to find you? Um, I am on TikTok mainly, but I have started up a YouTube channel now. I am also on Instagram. And I'm on most of the Discord groups. All right, so if we just go to YouTube and search, Jack will find you then. No, you you, you definitely won't. There'll be about <laughs> a million other Jacks to search through. The, so, um, so what do we search for? Uh, I'm pretty sure it is Ant underscore Major. 
for my YouTube. That is at and least your name. Them. Yeah, that's yes. your name here on uh, Discord at least. Um, so yeah. With that being said, uh, I want to say thank you all for joining. Um, and thank you for listening in. The end part will officially be taking a break. And yet, if there's a topic you would like to hear about, the Instagram will still be checked. So uh, send a message to the Instagram if you have um, some topics you would like to hear. And with that, you may or may not hear more from us at the end part next week, next month, next year. Who knows? Have a lovely day, everyone. And thank you all for listening in.